Welcome back. For this video, I will be going over the various phases that make up a continuous integration and continuous deployment DevOps model. In recent years, the DevOps model for releasing software and its updates has often been referenced as a key success factor for some of today's largest companies. But why are these companies leveraging this approach? Fundamentally, companies have a goal of being able to do several things. Those include deploy often with no downtime, be able to roll back any releases, be automated, and be fast. In order to do this, they've typically needed to break up their monstrous application or applicable to achieve their goal. Some common technologies for doing this include virtual machines, containers, and microservices. In addition to these technologies, there is also the use of service discovery, reverse proxies, and finally, configuration management and orchestration through the use of tools such as Ansible and Jenkins. Microservices have been around for many years, but it was containers that helped us effectively manage microservices. Containers allow our deployments to be self-sufficient by including runtime libraries such as JDK and Python, databases, and artifacts such as JAR, WAR, and static files. The traditional monolithic method of deploying software is no longer viable in a competitive software world, where a modular approach allows for updates to be rolled out in the tens to twenties per day, rather than the tens to twenties per month, as seen with legacy methodologies. For the rest of this demonstration, I'll manually break down the various processes into nine steps for building a deployment pipeline. Then finish off with automating all these processes with a configuration management and orchestration tool like Ansible. Let me preface this by mentioning that there are several ways to proceed through building a CI-CD pipeline, and this is meant to be an overview starting point. So I won't go into an incredible amount of detail at this time, and will leverage two main directories that I've previously built for these demonstration purposes. Here are the steps I'll run through. I'll start with 1. Checking out the code from a repository. 2. Running the pre-deployment tests. 3. Compiling and packaging the code. 4. Building the container. 5. Pushing the container to the registry. 6. Deploying the container to the production server. 7. Integrating the container. 8 running the post-integration tests, nine, pushing the test containers to the registry. And as a final step, we'll automate this process. Before we begin the detailed steps, there are a few dependencies we need to set up on our development machine to follow along. First, we'll need to make sure VirtualBox is installed. If you're running a Debian distro, you can use app-get install VirtualBox VirtualBox Dash DKMS. If you're using a RHEL distro, you can use their respective RPM file. Next, you'll need to download and install Vagrant for your distro. In our case, we've used a Debian based install found at www.vagrantup.com forward slash downloads.html. Once downloaded, you can install the dpkg file. This should get you ready for the pipeline steps. For step one, we'll leverage previously developed source for Vagrant. For those of you not familiar with Vagrant, Vagrant is a tool for building and managing virtual machine environments in a single workflow. If you haven't previously worked with Vagrant, there are several tutorials out there to get you more familiar. 